Right, welcome everyone. So today we're going to be talking about what you can expect at Manchester when you join us in the autumn. So my name's Rosie and in September I'm going to be going into my third and final year of an undergraduate geography degree at Manchester. So today we're going to try and answer a range of questions received both from offer holders and returning students. So we're going to discuss quite a variety of areas from what campus life is going to be like to what blended learning is and what you can expect on campus. So today I'm joined with F Professor Fiona Smith. So Fiona, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Fiona. I am the Vice Dean for Teaching, Learning and Students in the Faculty of Humanities. And that means that my job is to oversee all the teaching, learning and student experience activities that we have in the four schools in the faculty. And those schools are the Alliance Manchester Business School, the School of Arts, Languages and Cultures, the School of Social Sciences, and the School of Environment, Education and Development. And alongside my role as Vice Dean, I'm also an academic, so I also um, teach uh, on the Geography Programme. Great, thank you Fiona for that. So to kick things off, one of the most pressing questions that we've received is what do we really mean when we talk about this blended learning? So I think it'd be really great if we could maybe break this down to give it a little bit more clarity for everybody. So I think the first thing to say about blended learning is that it's not something new. It's something that we've been doing at Manchester for the last 15 years as part of our global MBA programme. So, and it is also an established way of teaching. So what blended learning means essentially is that there is some material that is delivered online and there is some material that is delivered face to face. At Manchester next year, we will be delivering our lectures online and small group teaching will be face to face. Um, and we're, we're doing that because safety is our priority. And so what we're going to do is those classes that would be very large, where there will be lots of mixing of different students, we're not going to have those on the campus itself. Instead, what we're doing is we're planning how we can really deliver that material in the best way possible. And actually, our experience from the second semester last year was that students actually liked a lot of that material because they could go back and they could revisit it. They could look at it in their own time. Um, they can use it for revision purposes and so on. The small group teaching, which I think is where students really engage with academics, will be face to face. And so that means that you'll still have the opportunity to discuss and debate ideas, both with your peers and with the staff in the different departments on, on your programme. Um, a small group teaching will largely take place in groups of normally between something between 15 and 30 students. And that's what we do all the time. That's an important part of the university experience. And that bit is the bit that we think is the most important to try and make sure it takes place on campus. So that's the seminars, the practicals, academic advising, and there will be lots of different opportunities to meet with your classmates, to work with them, and to work with the academic staff in the faculty. That sounds great. Thanks for that, Fiona. I think you're right that having this blended learning type actually supports people in lots of different ways. And my experience last semester was really positive. I thought that the teaching was just to the same standard. It's just that now parts of it have to be online, but that's what we have to do right now for safety. And so I think that, you know, for people who enjoy the face to face, it's great that they're still going to get that with the small group teaching. But equally, everything will still be so accessible, both on the day of the lecture and you can revisit it. So I think that's going to really help people. And then moving on from that, then our next question that we get a lot is that students and offer holders are always asking what being on campus is going to be like for them. And because we've got blended learning as an option, does it mean now that they don't need to come onto campus? I think we can safely say that that next year is going to be different. It isn't going to be the same as it as it would have been in, in a normal year. But that doesn't mean that the whole of the student experience disappears. Safety is clearly very important. And we are working very closely to the government guidelines to keep you as safe as possible on campus, in the libraries, in halls of residence and so on. So one of the differences, of course, is that there is going to be um, 
regular cleaning, deep cleaning of the rooms that teaching takes place in and of other spaces on campus. We're going to have face masks for all students. There will be hand sanitizer available um, across campus. And there's going to be a slightly longer gap between small group sessions so that we can make sure that we can get students safely in and out of the buildings. That said, I think that we also need to think about that all the other facilities that are available on campus and they will still be available. So the library will still be um, available. It, is likely to be on a click and collect basis rather than you going in and sitting and working there. But a lot of the rooms that we would normally be using for teaching, but which with social distancing rules in have become too small to teach and we're gonna make available to students to book so that they can find safe spaces on campus where they can study independently or in small groups. Um, so we are hoping that we will be able to create a different kind of experience on campus, but one that is still very much worth coming to Manchester for. Yes, yeah, definitely. We really want to keep that sense of community. Um, and so we, we need that between definitely peer to peer and also between our classmates and the academics. So could you speak to me a bit more about what the university is doing to ensure that that sense of community is maintained despite the, the differences we're going to see? This is one of the things that we've been thinking really hard about. I think a really important part of coming to university is about that sense of being part of a learning community with both your peers and with academics. So we're starting to think first of all about induction and how do we deliver an induction experience that gets students ready for learning in a blended learning environment but also that gives them other things that they want from, from that student experience. Um, in terms of thinking about the teaching activities, one of the um, areas we're thinking about is how we can um, develop group-based activities that still give people an opportunity to get to know one another, even if they're not on campus. So um, Zoom is a great way of, of meeting other people, talking to people. It's not quite the same as being on campus, but it still gives people lots of opportunities to discuss and debate ideas. One of the things that we found that employers are saying to us is actually it is great that students are now learning to negotiate uh, how you work online with people, perhaps in a different time zone and, and in a different place. And actually all those kind of very practical skills in lots of ways that people are getting from this whole experience are actually really important in terms of going out and getting a job at the end of of their degree so I think we are we are trying to think about all those things we've also been working closely with the students union um, they did an amazing job in in the second semester last year to deliver the clubs and societies um, online uh, but there will be even more of that kind of activity next academic year. So there are going to be all sorts of different things going on. It will be different, but we are working hard to make sure that we build that sense of community for, for our students. That's lovely, great. So um, another aspect is that some of our courses, particularly me as a geographer and, and many others, they do have a field work or maybe a placement element. So how do we plan to access the fieldwork and placements despite us having to be partially online? Okay, so fieldwork and placements are an important part of some degree programmes, not all degree programmes, but many degree programmes. And so again, we've been working quite closely to think about how can we deliver those in a way that is safe. Um, virtual learning in a, in a fieldwork environment doesn't necessarily replicate the experience. So what we, we've been trying to think through is, can we move some of those, those activities so that they come later in, in the degree, so that we can still do them in, in the way that we'd expected to do them, uh, in, but maybe in, in a year's time or in, in six months time. So we've been looking and thinking about where do we put those activities so that we can still deliver them. In some programs, we've felt that that isn't really possible. And so we've been thinking about, well, are there other ways that we can make sure that students get those kinds of skills? Um, in 
uh, for placements, we've been working with employers and our industry contacts to think about how we can make sure that we get some of those experiences into the program. And we're trying to think about whether or not we can incorporate live pro projects into our programs. And we've been working with our international exchange partners to try and think about different ways of offering that kind of international experience as well. So at the moment, the plan is to try as far as possible to replicate that experience, but perhaps later in the degree. If that isn't possible, then we will find other ways of delivering those skills as far as we possibly can. God, good. That I think that's really reassuring that everything's being done that's possible so that we can still get those experiences. Um, and so then another question that we get mainly from current students at the minute is all about how our group work and our exams are going to be assessed in the future if we, you know, if we can't be um, all together for our exams and they're online, what's going to happen there with our assessment? So for quite a long time, we've had a lot of debate in the faculty and across the university about how we assess students. I've always been slightly concerned that we do a lot of exams and then you never do an exam again once you leave university. And so what the, the whole lockdown has forced us to do is to think about, well, are there other ways of assessing students? So um, we're still, we still will be looking to assess students, but we're trying to think about how we can do that in a way that, that uh, really reflects the kinds of skills that we want our students to get that really allows them to demonstrate their skills and abilities. And trying to move away from that slightly high risk, single exam that's right at the end of a course. And if you have a bad day, it can really impact your degree. So we're, we're trying to think about how we can make our assessment more inclusive. Uh, as you know, last semester, we moved in the faculty to largely to seven day exams um, and, and part of that was trying to say okay well actually it, when you go out into the real world into in getting a job or whatever else you're doing then you're much more likely to have access to all sorts of different resources and it isn't about learning that you know who said what and when they said it, it it's more about how you can apply your knowledge in a way that is um you know convincing and and presents a good argument. So I think the seven day exam was one of the things that we did to try and deliver that. Say, okay, you can use everything you've got. You've got longer to do the exam. Um, I think next year we're trying to think whether or not seven days is the right length. We think it'll still be an extended period of time. I think seven days was quite a long period of time. But uh, what we're trying to do is to take this as an opportunity to say, well, what do we think exams and assessments should look like in 20 years time? Do we think we'll still be doing the same thing where students are sitting in a room handwriting um, exam papers? They don't sit and handwrite lectures very often. So it's handwriting practice mainly. So I think what we want to do is to say, are there different ways of delivering this? And are there better ways of delivering this? And can we use this as an opportunity to kickstart our thinking on how we should assess students. We still want to be able to assess group working. We still want to be able to make sure that we're uh, assessing all the, the learning outcomes and doing all those things that we want to do. But actually the format of the learning maybe and the assessment maybe could be different and, and could be more effective for our students. Yeah, I really like that it sounds as if the university is taking this as an opportunity rather than something that we have to overcome actually it's going to give us all a chance to grow and think about how we do things and in particular i think that's really going to benefit students especially from an employability perspective because having a different a, a real range of assessment types is what we can expect when we're applying for internships and jobs in the future so i suppose it's similar to a lot of things that we've experienced recently it's all about adapting to new methods and finding the best way to work with it which leads me on to the next question that we've got so i think hopefully now we're all just about getting to grips with Zoom and digital communication channels. So I was just wondering what sort of software is going to be used for our teaching and learning in the coming year and how this can be accessed by students who can't be on campus or can't access university computers. 
So the, the main um, software that we use in, in terms of our virtual learning environment is Blackboard. And we will continue to use that because we think that is something that both our staff and our students are very familiar with and have used a lot. Zoom, of course, provides us with additional opportunities and, and we, you know, we will be using that too where, where we think that is appropriate. In terms of other kind of software issues, we've, we've been working with um, software vendors around licensing because licensing is clearly an important part of um, provision of software. Licenses tend to be very expensive, so students can't and wouldn't be expected to go out and buy those licenses themselves. Some, like, some vendors are now making those licenses available to students on their own PCs. And we're hoping that that would carry on. So the University of Manchester would buy the license, but students would then be allowed to access those on their own, own PCs. Another option is that um, the computer clusters on campus can be used by students um, anyway. Um, and that would have all the required software and databases and so on that they would need. Some packages are a little bit more difficult to access. And so what we're thinking about there is whether or not students can effectively remote access into the PCs that are on campus. And so all of those things are being thought about by our um, group that's looking at about how we offer the best provision we can for students when they come back onto campus. I suppose on, on top of that, not quite software as such, but is also the library. The library at Manchester is, as you will know, is amazing uh, in terms of the amount of facilities that we've got uh, and the amount of um, both books, electronic books and um, print copies, but also in terms of journals and all of those things will all be available to students. And again, it, whether they're on campus or whether or not they're not on campus, they will still be able to access all the reading that they will need as part of their course. Great, that's really reassuring to hear. Um, and so more widely as well, another question in, around the teaching experience is, are students going to be getting the same amount of teaching as pre-COVID? Yes, is the short answer. They are, they are going to get the, the same amount. It will be different. It will, some of it will be material that they will be accessing in their own time. And we think that that is actually beneficial to students because many of our students work or they have caring responsibilities. So actually being able to access materials at a time that suits them is important. But what we will do is we'll still issue a timetable. Students will still have their lecture slot uh, and they will have small group teaching allocated on, on campus um, and what we'll be hoping and expecting for is that students will have access to lecture material by that time and that, that perhaps as part of um, the provision what we'll be offering is perhaps drop-in sessions or a Q&A related to the lecture material as well as the, um, the seminar sessions or the tutorials that go alongside. So blended learning does not mean a reduction in, in teaching time or a reduction in the contact with the lecturer. It's just a different kind of, of contact time. One of the things that we found in um, the, the initial lockdown period at the end of last year was that students were much happier to put forward questions in Zoom. It felt a little bit safer, a little bit um, more anonymous perhaps in terms of, of putting forward the um, questions that they had. So we got actually much more engagement in terms of lectures. So all of those things are really important and we will still have times when students can drop in to ask lecturers questions, so student consultation times, office hours and so on, all of those things are still going to take place. It's just going to be a little bit different. Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely agree with that, that sometimes you got some of the best questions that we've had asked in lectures because it's definitely easier to sometimes type your question out in the chat box than be the one person putting your hand up in the lecture theatre. So you do still get that real sense of togetherness, even though you're all sat obviously quite far apart just with your laptops out. Um, 
yeah so it's really good to hear as well that we're not going to get any less teaching it's just it's just being delivered in different ways so then the last thing I wanted to ask you about is especially for me going into third year I'm really starting to think about what I'm going to be doing after I graduate so I'm sure I'm not alone in wondering what careers and employability support I will still be able to access in the coming year effectively the career service is still thinking about how they can provide all the services that they have, but with a range, a mix of online services and face-to-face um, -face services. Across all the services that are provided by the university, including the disability service, the counselling service, the uh, career service and so on, one of the things that happened last year was that students, again, were much more willing to engage with them in an online environment than they necessarily were when they had to walk up the road to get there. So we actually got better engagement. And again, we want to use that as an opportunity to try and say, well, what bits that were good and what do we keep going with? And what do we, we go back to face to face for as soon as we possibly can? So we'll still be having careers events next year. Uh, whether they take place face-to-face -face or online. We'll still be engaging with employers. Um, you'll still get the weekly e-bulletin that you, you would have got in terms of sub summer internships, in terms of work placement opportunities and so on. So we're still very much thinking about how can we prepare our students for the world of work. I think one of the things that's going to be important is about how students prepare their CVs because actually they have got so many new skills now um, in terms of just having got through um, the last few months, whether that is as, as someone who's just had to kind of deal with doing exams that didn't happen or whether or not that's a student who, who's already on campus. So there's lots of different skills that people have. And we're working hard with employers to make sure that we support our students in terms of identifying those skills, building on those skills so that you can really make the most of what has been a very difficult situation as you, you go out in, and looking for jobs and so on. Excellent. Thanks, that, Fiona. That's great to hear. I suppose just to end up with, I think the thing that would be good to, to just think about is that we are doing everything that we possibly can in order to make sure that our students, whether they're new students or returning students, have the best opportunities that they can when they return to campus in September. We are working hard to make sure that we've thought about all those different elements of the, of the student experience. So, of course, the teaching part is, is very important and is a key priority of ours, but we haven't forgotten about assessment. We've been thinking about placements and field work and all those other things that go around um, individual programs. And we've also been thinking about the student experience more broadly and working with the students union and so on. So we're doing everything that we can to make sure that our students have the best possible experience with us from September. We do recognise that some students won't be able to come to Manchester, perhaps because they're shielding, um, perhaps because they are international students whose borders are, are currently closed. And we'll make sure that those students have a great online experience and those students that can come onto campus have a great on-campus experience. In the next few weeks, the teams from the different schools will be in touch with students to give them more information about their programme, about campus safety, about accommodation, about welcome week and all those different bits that, that go together in terms of the programme. So we're really looking forward to welcoming everybody back to Manchester as soon as possible in October. That's brilliant. Thanks, Fiona. And definitely it's making me more excited for coming back. And hopefully this will just reassure everyone that despite everything, we're still going to be offering just as much as we would have if, if COVID hadn't happened. And yeah, it's just it's going to be a different year, but I think it'll be exciting. I think it's going to give us some really good opportunities. So thanks so much for joining me for this interview today. Uh, it's been great to have a chat. Thank you. Thank you, Rosie. I shall see you next term. Yes, yeah, see you then. <laughs>